Welcome to another edition of MCAT Strategy. Today we will be doing a verbal reasoning video on how to approach main idea questions. Main idea questions among the question types usually falls within the easy to medium range. They are very common to many passages, so they will be a regular feature when you do your verbal reasoning. Main idea questions are often easier because it is difficult to miss the purpose of the passage. However, because it tends to be an easier question type, it is common to make careless mistakes. Additionally, there are other factors such as certain types of answer traps that may make things a little bit more complicated. Main idea questions are usually found as one of the earlier questions in the passage and they can come in various permutations such as what is the central idea of the passage or the purpose of this passage is. No matter how it is worded, it is not too difficult to identify a main idea type question. This is a somewhat of a recap from my other MCAT verbal reasoning strategies, but it is always important to pay attention to the main idea that is being developed within the passage. Figuring out and understanding the main idea is your number one priority when reading the passage. One piece of advice when it comes to reading is that beginning and ending sentences of paragraphs are particularly useful because they are introductory and concluding sentences, they tend to have a lot of information regarding what the purpose of the paragraph was. So while you are reading, look for the common thread that holds all of the paragraphs together and look for the umbrella concept under which all the paragraphs fit. Of course, when you are trying to understand the main idea behind the passage, you should also be looking at what the author's stance is on the topic. Once you have finished reading, you should already be in the habit of writing down the main idea and purpose and the author's stance in a short sentence or two. This is just a very standard component of many people's verbal reasoning strategy and it will help you keep on track when answering the questions and it is also a useful piece of information to refer back to. In most cases, once you have the author's main idea and stance written out, it becomes straightforward to answer the main idea question. Just make sure that the answer choice you pick is in agreement with what you wrote down. Process of elimination is always important in answering questions and it is particularly useful here because there will be some answer choices that are blatantly incorrect and you can eliminate those right off the bat. An important thing to note is to make sure you read all of the answer choices. For example, some people will read answer choice A and then B and then they feel B is the correct answer so they'll select it and just skip to the next question without reading answer choices C and D. The test makers will often take advantage of this tendency in some people by placing an answer choice earlier, like for A and B, which sounds decent enough to pick, but for C or D, they will put an answer choice that is even better. So people will select the first answer choice that sounds good and miss the fact that one of the later answer choices is in fact better to answer the question. This is just a very common mistake that test writers make because they feel they've understood the passage. I like to use the checklist approach when I use the process of elimination and I'm left with two answers and I cannot pick one confidently. What you do is you do a quick check of all the paragraphs and see if they relate to one of the answer choices. If all of the paragraphs relate to the answer choice then that is the correct answer. However, if only some but not all the paragraphs relate to the answer choice, that in general is not the answer you are looking for.
Different types of answer traps are common to different types of questions. So I will be going over the common traps for the main idea question type. One common trap is the reversal. The passage may say that A causes B, but the answer choice will say B causes A. This type of answer trap is most dangerous in passages that were very dense. And because the passage is very dense, it is easy to confuse the relationship being described. Two narrow answer traps are probably the most common type that people fall for, including myself sometimes. Two narrow answer choices will have a topic that was talked about in one or two paragraphs, usually the last paragraphs, but overall it wasn't the main idea. This trap often comes in the form of a line that is taken verbatim from the passage. Because the line is word for word from the passage, it lulls you into a false sense of security when in actuality it is a trap. Another common type of trap is a stance problem. In this type of answer trap, the answer choice has the main idea, but does not reflect the author's stance. For example, the author's stance may be neutral on the topic, but the answer choice will be very positive, and that reflects a stance that the author does not hold. So it makes the answer choice incorrect. This type of answer trap often has absolute wording. When you see answer choices that contain always or never, they usually reflect a stance that is more extreme than the author's actual stance. As with all strategies, you will start slowly when you start to integrate them into your practice, and with practice, they will start to come automatically and you can increase your speed. That's all for this video. Any suggestions, comments, or discussion is welcomed. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, keep on practicing. This is MCAT Strategy, logging off.